Hi guys. Okay, so what we're going to be looking at here today is just a couple of things on Motec, which I've recently found, which I think make using Motec easier and more useful as a program. This really came about as a, a sort of a desire by me to redo my my workbook for the NASCAR. The reason for this was that basically I had a lot of information from the default project, the default circuit project within Motec that really wasn't useful to me for the NASCAR and it was kind of clouding what I could see which I did need to look at so I've rebuilt the whole thing practically there's probably one or two bits that remain um, I am thinking that I'll probably try and provide this workbook at some point but I don't know when that will be because there's a couple of things which I still haven't fully defined as to what I want that and there's some information sort of within the workbook which uh, based on a couple of technical partnerships and whatnot may not really be okay to release to everyone but I'll have to sort that um, but anyway basically I found a couple of things which I think will be helpful so I'd just like to show you the first one is that you can actually change the backgrounds within Motec uh, it sounds kind of a pointless thing but it is actually useful for two reasons first off if you notice that the base scheme for Motec is incredibly white and I mean that in the sense that if you're like me and you tend to do a lot of practice and you're doing a lot of data logs and you're spending a lot of time looking at them, staring at a screen that is pure white practically completely is not good and it will really kind of hurt your eyes after a while. I really wish I'd found this earlier because it would have made things so much nicer for me when I was going through all this but uh, you can actually change the backgrounds and there's a couple of inbuilt schemes which are really nice for this. Um, the second second reason why you would want to do this is because if you get a better contrast in colour for the background it makes it much easier for you to see the data, it, it contrasts better against against the background and you can see more clearly sort of the definition of peaks and things in areas like this and and so on. So I'm um, I'm just going to show you how to do that now. Uh, it's quite easy. All you got to do is go up to the top and click on Tools, and then if you go down to the bottom here, you can click on Options, and then you see I'm I'm already in this Colors tab. You probably sort of jump in and you'll be in the General, but you want to go across to Colors, and then if you see here, there's the option to select Schemes. Now, if we go and select scheme, you can see that there's four available. There's Motec White, which is what we're currently using. There's Motec Black Data. There's Motec Black, and there's Motec Gray Data. Now, the three below are kind of all a bit of a little variance on each other. They're pretty similar. The basic idea is that they recolor pretty much everything you can see on the screen that is white to either black or very dark gray. Now, personally, I like the black one because it colours almost everything on screen black, and that's that's nice, I think. So you just click click which scheme you want, and click OK. You, if you see here, you can actually create your own sort of schemes, but I I'm, I'm quite happy with the with the default black scheme. But it's up to you. I mean, you can spend the time doing that. So if we click Apply now, you can see that everything in the background. Has, has basically been changed, well the colours have effectively been inverted and as you can see we can much more easily spot these peaks and troughs within the data now and I, I think it's a much nicer viewing experience for you. Um, the second thing I would like to talk about is um, using overlays and also a little function called variance. Now I was reading through a book which I will put a, a recommendation in in the uh, in the in the description here. It's called Making Sense of Squiggly Lines, and it's, it's basically about just a sort of a basic introduction to data analysis use, using programs very similar to Motec and whatnot. I think it's a very good book, and it's certainly extremely helpful if you kind of wanted to get started and you don't really know what you're looking for because. Let's be honest, if you know nothing and you suddenly look at this, it doesn't really tell you a lot. But anyway, back to the original point. In that book, there is a reference to a function called variance. Basically, what the variance function is, is it shows you, not in real time, but effectively it shows you 
your time loss compared to your best lap or an overlaid lap uh, with relation to distance as you as you view the log. Now I spent a while trying to figure out how to actually create this channel before realizing that it's actually already in Motec you can simply just if you if you go over to the side here you see the the, the small D with the squiggle uh, if you click that you can see that it, it puts this extra extra sort of area in the chart now you can also see here that it says no overlays the reason why um, there's nothing here is because there's no overlays and therefore there is no lap to compare to so if we just we say we start with this 27.6 and we compare this with a 28.2 uh, actually we'll compare with a 28.0 now you see how we have these three boxes here if you want to overlay a lap you simply click in a square box you can actually have more overlays if you look here you can keep clicking and you can have I think you can have up to eight but I'm not entirely sure but as you can see it gets quite difficult to decipher what's going on so we'll just remove those and we just keep with the uh, the first overlay actually I'll use a I'll use a lap which is closer because that's that's kinda cutting the function off a bit there okay let's let's use this 27.8 because you can quite clearly see it um, yeah so what what the variance does is it shows you where you're losing time or where a lap is losing time to another so I, th I thought this could be really helpful for if you've got cars which uh, handle particularly differently say on corner entry and exit say you've got a car which has got a lot of a, a lot of traction for the exit but it's not very good on corner entry you could use this this function to well I know you can look at the end lap time and see which is better but you could use this variance function to see at which part of the lap uh, the corresponding setup is, is, is better and in which areas it's worse now you can you can see here that obviously as we sort of enter turn one as we're sort of about halfway through turn one you can see that the the variance builds quite quite uh, quite rapidly now the reason for this can be seen by looking at the corrected speed and the overlaid graph we can see on the corrected speed here that the red line which is our 27.6 and our white line which is our 27.8 they diverge quite considerably and you can see that the the red line is actually carrying more speed through the middle of the turn with a difference of about four miles an hour sort of as we're as we're kind of exiting one and entering two there you can see that the white line actually catches up and is actually a mile an hour faster right right as it enters two but you can see again that as we as we move through two the red line creeps ahead and, and gains a three mile an hour advantage and this is what y you can see represented in the in the variance here you can see this first this first segment here was where we were in this sort of region and we were really really pulling time you can see where the dip where it goes back down again is in this region where the white line was actually actually faster and then again you can see here where the variance shoots up again is this is this sort of trough here on the white line and the and the sort of flat on the red and then you can see as we're as we're coming down the back straight the two lines are almost identical and therefore the variance is is staying constant now an interesting thing to see is we we can actually have a look here why this why this white line fell away here and you can see that it actually it it kind of coinc it coincides here where if we look on the throttle trace we can see that at this at this point when the white line actually moved ahead we were forced to get off the throttle and we spent a longer time off throttle than in the green trace and that's that's why we can we can see here that at the specific point we've lost uh, lost more speed compared with the green line uh, not the green line sorry compared with the red line but then you can see that actually the white line gets back on the throttle earlier than the green line and therefore it, it it makes the speed back up but what it doesn't make back up is that is that time loss in that in that zone um, so yeah, that's that's like that's kind of a an an idea as to what you can accomplish by looking at overlays and and whatnot 
Now, the last thing I would like to talk about is just a little thing. If you look at the bottom of the graph, you can see here that it says foot. Now, you can change between a time scale for the bottom of the graph and a distance scale. Now, I've actually not come across many instances where I would actually find looking at it in time to be useful yet. I I say yet because there may be a time when it, 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 there is a, a difference and I'll have to revisit it but I just always look at it in foot and I think this is kind of probably most helpful for ovals just on the basis of the laps are relatively short and it allows you to really see between the the, the four turns what, what sort of the differences are. Now if you see here we can see that it's quite easy for us to compare where the, the difference in, in in throttle lift location into one because we're always in we're always in a distance space here so we can see that the corrected speed peak is 187 for the white overlay and it is one well it's the decimal isn't shown but it's, a, it's 188 for the red line now you can quite easily see that that's because uh, on the red line they were on the throttle for longer than the white line you can also see that they carry generally more speed through the turn and you can see that although the lines are apart you can see that the general shape of the trace is the same and that the sort of the points of throttle application are very roughly similar and you can you can quite easily tell then especially going down this the back straight here you can quite easily see that with the worn tires the white line is slower off the turn and therefore slower by the time it reaches it reaches turn three and conversely again because it's on old tires they're lifting earlier compared with the red line now you can you can see that quite easily because it's in it's in distance but now if we change it to time if you look the peaks have completely skewed now this is because obviously you can see from the variance it shoots up I've actually got that scale kind of too small for you, for you guys to see that right now but you can still you can you can quite easily see that the variance is is so large that it's skewing the the two laps relative to each other and now we have what appears to be a completely inverse situation where it appears as though the white line was actually later off the throttle as it entered three now we know that that's not true because if we look at it again in distance we can see that the white line was certainly off throttle earlier. Now, this is just really a warning to make sure that your graphs are in the right, the right base. If you if you want to look at them in time, I'm not saying that you can't. If you can find use of them looking at them in time, then sure, go for it. Personally, I find looking at them purely in distance is is the best way. But it's it's up to you, and I'll I'll leave you to decide. But but it's quite easy to change you just literally go to the top here and this little clock icon you click and it changes between a time scale and a distance scale alright I think that's pretty much everything I was going to cover so if you've got any more questions on MoTeC please put them in the comments I'll do my best to answer them when I get the chance I know I also need to go back to one of my early videos and fix some broken links I will do that as and when I get the chance because I now need to go back and refine those links as I've now also lost them. But yeah, I hope this was, was helpful for you and I'll uh, I'll try and get some more of these videos out.